This video is part of the lectures related to the machine dynamics topic. It is the first video in the section dealing with the kinematics of planar mechanisms. In this video, we are going to present loop closure equations. And how to use these equations to analysis the position of planar mechanisms. Our study here will be limited to mechanisms having only lower kinematic pairs. By the end of this video, you will be able first to represent links positions using vectors. You will be able to represent bars, ternary links, quaternary links, and sliders using vectors. Second, you will be able to determine the number of unknowns in the position analysis problem. You will be able to tell the size of the position analysis problem. You will be able also to determine how many equations that should be solved to define uniquely the position of the mechanism. Third, and last learning outcome of this video, you will be able to write the required number of loop closure equations, that once solved, give a complete and unique definition of the aplanar mechanism's position. To achieve the learning outcomes, enumerated previously, the video is divided in four parts. First we are going to show to represent links using vectors. This is an important step, as vector analysis tools are required to define and solve the position problem of a mechanism. Second, we are going to explain how to calculate the number of unknowns while analyzing the kinematics of a mechanism. We are going to give a technique to find the dimension or the size of the position problem. The dimension of the position problem corresponds to the numbers of equations that should be solved in order to define completely the position of all links. Third, we going define what are loops. We will show how to detect loops within a mechanism. Fourth, and last, we are going to show how to write loop closure equations. Loop closure equations are equations that involve the vector positions of links forming a loop. Let's start now with the first part which is dealing with the vector representation of links. In mathematics, vectors are elements of vector spaces. They are used in physics to represent physical parameters or entities that has magnitude and direction. Here, the position vector of a link, has both a magnitude and direction, thus vectors are suitable to represent the position of a link. In mathematics, vectors can be expressed, as linear combination of the vectors of a given basis. They can be written, in a unique way, as combination of the vectors of a given basis. The coefficients of the linear combination are called coordinates. Likewise, vectors in physics are also represented by their coordinates. Physical spaces can be assimilated to vector spaces. Thus, it is possible to define a basis for a given physical space. There is multiple ways to define a basis for the physical space. Given a basis, any vector is written in a unique way, as a linear combination of the vectors of the basis. The coefficients of the linear combination are the coordinates. In planar physics, the physical spaces and the corresponding mathematical spaces are two-dimensional. One possible basis is the polar reference. In that case, any vector, is uniquely defined, by its modulus and its angle. 
The modulus represents the magnitude or length and the angle represents the direction. Bars are rotating links. They are binary links. They are connected to at least two other links using two revolute or pin kinematic pairs. The position of a bar is represented by a vector that connects the two rotating joints, here, A and B. The vector position R, is here the vector AB. As the bar is a link. Thus, it is a rigid body. Consequently, the length of the bar, which is here the distance AB is constant. Hence, the modulus or the magnitude of the vector position is constant while the link AB is rotating. The modulus of a bar's vector position is only defined once, independent of the motion assigned to the mechanism. The modulus of a bar's vector position depends only on the geometry of how the mechanism is designed and assembled. The modulus of a bar's vector position is equal to the distance between the two pin kinematic pairs. A bar is a rotation link. As the bar rotates, its direction changes. The link's direction is measured by the vector's angle. This angle changes as the links rotates. The vector's angle can vary while the link rotates. The bar's angle is a position parameter. In the definition of the bar's position here, the vector position R is the vector AB. The origin here is A. As A is fixed the vector position here defines the absolute position of the bar. It is also possible to consider B as the origin. In this case the vector position R, of the bar, is equal to the vector BA. This vector position defines the position of the bar relatively to the point B. The new vector position defines only a relative position of the bar, and does write an absolute position, as point B can move. The bars considered at this stage are connected to the ground by one revolute kinematic pair. Thus the bar or the link has a fixed axis rotation. If the bar is not connected to the ground, it undergoes a general motion. Here it is possible to define only a relative position. The vector position can be either A B in this case it defines the relative position to point A. Or it is possible to consider the vector position as the vector B A, and in this case, it defines the relative position to B. The angle of the vector is always considered starting from the I vector of the plane basis. The basis vectors, I and J, are represented at the origin of the vector position. If the vector position is AB, then basis is represented in point A the origin. And if the vector position is BA, then the basis is represented in point B the origin. If the bar is horizontal, and if the vector position is in the same direction as the vector I, then the angle is equal to zero. If the vector is in the opposite direction to I, then the angle is 180 degrees. If the bar is in the vertical position, and if the vector is in the same direction as the vector J, the angle is 90 degrees. And if the vector position is in the opposite direction to J, then the angle is 270 degrees. A slider is a translating link. It is either translating along the ground, or along another link. The position of the slider is represented by a vector that is parallel to direction of translation. 
Here in this first example the slider is translating along the ground, thus, the vector position should be in the horizontal direction. The angle of the vector position is known as the translating direction is given. Here, for example, the angle theta is equal to zero. However, the modulus of the vector position is variable, and changes depending on how far does the slider move, leftwards or rightwards. The origin of the vector position, here A, is a point, which is not moving relatively the link along which the slider is translating. If the slider is translating in the vertical direction, then, the vector position is oriented in the vertical direction, having an angle equal to 90 degrees. If the ground is inclined with angle phi, the vector position of the slider will also be inclined by the same angle as the slider. If the slider C is translating along a bar AB, it is then possible to consider either A or B as the origin of the vector position. In the two cases the vector angle can be determined, knowing the bar angle. The position of a ternary link can be defined by any vector connecting two revolute joints. It can be either the vector AB, or the vector AC, or the vector BC. One can move from one vector to another knowing the triangle angles. The vector position of a ternary link has a constant modulus and a variable angle. Any constant vector, any vector that has a constant modulus and a constant angle, can refer to the ground, can be assimilated to a vector position of the ground. We have finished first part dealing with the vector representation of bars, sliders, ternary links, and the ground. Now we move to the second part dealing the dimension analysis of the position problem. We are going to determine the number of equations, to be solved, in order to define the position of the all links in a mechanism. In order to determine the position of all links, we need to solve a set or a system of independent algebraic equations. The position problem dimension corresponds to the number of independent algebraic equations that should be solved. This number depends on the number and type of links, and, the number and types of kinematic pairs. In this video, we focus only, on planar mechanism with kinematic pairs allowing only one degree of freedom. We will deal only with planar mechanisms, built up from sliders, bars, ternary links, and connected through revolute and prismatic joints. The number of independent equations required for solving the position problem should be equal to the number of unknown position parameters. If the number of independent equations is less than the number of unknowns, then the position problem will certainly has an infinite number of solutions. This is non-physical as the mechanism's position is predictable. On the other hand, if the number of independent equations is more than the number of unknowns, then the position problem has no solution. This means that the mechanism cannot be assembled. Thus, in order to deal with a physically acceptable problem, the number of equations should be equal to the number of unknowns. In order to have the dimension of the position problem, we are going to count the number of unknowns. Let L, be the number of links in the mechanism. Here we limit our analysis to mechanisms with only kinematic pairs allowing each one degree of freedom. 
Thus the links can be either sliders, or bars, or ternary links, or quaternary links, etc. One parameter is required to define the position for each link. A vector position of a slider has a given constant direction, how the vector modulus can change. One parameter is then required for each slider, which is the modulus of the vector position. The vector position of a bar, a ternary link, a quaternary link, has a constant given modulus, and a variable angle. One parameter is then required for each bar, ternary link, or quaternary link, which is the angle of the vector position. However, the ground is the reference for the position analysis. Thus its position is assumed static. Consequently, one parameter is required for each non-grounded link. In a mechanism of L links, there is L-1 non-grounded links. Thus, in all, L- parameters are required to define the position of all links. So, in all, we need L-1 parameters, to define the position of all links. However, in a mechanism, there is some degrees of freedom that are controlled externally. This corresponds to the number M of mobility. If mobility is M, there should be M degrees of freedom that are controlled by an external source of energy. This means there should be M inputs. Thus, M parameters that can be considered as given and not unknowns. Thus, the total number of unknowns in a position problem of a mechanism, is equal to, L minus 1 minus M. Consequently, we the position problem will be written in terms of L minus 1 minus M independent equations. The number of equations to be solved is equal to the number of links minus 1 minus mobility. Let consider this first example, where the mechanism is built up from four links that connected through four lower pairs. Here L is equal to 4, J1 is equal to 4, and J2 is equal to 0, thus mobility is 1. The number of unknowns of the position problem is equal to 4 minus 1 minus 1, thus U is equal to 2. For this type of mechanisms, the position problem will be written in terms of two independent algebraic equations. This will be the case of the four bar mechanisms, or the slider crank mechanisms, or their inversions. As for these mechanisms, the number of links is equal to 4, and the mobility is equal to 1. Thus, the position will be written in terms of two independent equations. In the six bar mechanism shown here, L is equal to 6, J1 is equal to 7, and J2 is equal to 0, thus mobility is 1. The number of unknowns of the position problem is equal to 6 minus 1 minus 1, thus U is equal to 4. For this 6 bar mechanism, the position problem will be written in terms of 4 independent algebraic equations. Now we move to the third part, which will introduce loops. Loops are very important in analyzing the position of a mechanism. Loops will exploit it to write the required independent algebraic equations. A loop is a part of the mechanism. A mechanism can contain one, or two, or more loops. Sometimes the mechanism draws only one loop. The whole mechanism is a loop. A loop is a kinematic chain. Thus it is built up from links, 
which are connected together using kinematic pairs or joints. It is not required to have the ground in a loop. A loop may or may not contain the ground. A loop is a kinematic chain, where each link is connected to exactly two other links. Each link is connected to two and only two other links. In this mechanism, there is three loops. The first loop is formed by links 1, 2, 3, and 4. Link 1 is connected to links 2 and 4. Link 2 is connected to links 1 and 3. Link 3 is connected to links 2 and 4. Link 4 is connected to links 1 and 3. So each link is connected to exactly two other links. Links 2, 3, 4, 6, and 5 forms a second loop. Also, links 1, 4, 6, 5, and 2 make a loop, the third loop. In a four bar mechanism, there is one loop. The whole mechanism draws one loop. Link 1 is connected to links 2 and 4. Link 2 is connected to links 1 and 3. Link 3 is connected to links 2 and 4. Link 4 is connected to links 1 and 3. So each link is connected to exactly two other links. In this quick return mechanism, there is two loops. Links 1, 2, 4, and 3 make the first loop. Links 1, 3, 4, and 6 make the second loop. In this last part, we are going to introduce loop closure equations. A loop closure equation is a vector equation. It is an equation that involves vectors. It is written in terms of the vectors describing the position of links. A loop closure equation exploits the fact that each link is connected to two other links. Thus, a loop is a closed kinematic chain. Consequently, to go from one point to another, within the loop, there is two possible paths. A loop closure equation is obtained by writing the position of one point in the loop, relatively to another, in two different ways, and then equating the two definitions. A loop closure equation involves vectors. Vectors in plane are two-dimensional. Using the coordinates of vectors, the loop closure equation can be transformed to two scalar algebraic equations. There is several ways to write the loop closure equation for each loop. However, the loop closure equations for the same loop are dependent. We can write only one independent equation for each loop. In a four-bar mechanism, there is only one loop, the whole mechanism draws one loop. Thus, it is possible to write only one independent loop closure equation. However, it is possible to write the loop closure equation in different ways, all equivalent. And only one should be considered to solve the position problem. For example it is possible to write the position of point C relatively to point A in two different ways. We can define the position of point C using either links 2 and 3 or links 4 and the ground. Thus the vector AB plus the vector BC is equal to the vector AD plus the vector DC. This is a first example of the loop closure equation of this 4-bar mechanism.
It is also possible to work with the position B relatively to A. Using link 2, the position of B is given by the vector AB. Using links 1, 4, and 3, the position of B is AD plus DC plus CB. Thus, the loop closure equation is AB equal to AD plus DC plus CB. It is also possible to work with the position of D relatively to A. In that case, the loop closure equation writes AD is equal to AB plus BC plus CD. It is also possible to work with the position of B relatively to D. In that case, the loop closure equation writes DA plus AB is equal to DC plus CB. In this slider crank mechanism, there is one loop. The whole mechanism draws one loop. Link 1, the ground, is connected to the link 2, the bar AB. Link 2, is connected to link 3, the bar BC. Link 3, is connected to link 4, the slider. The slider is connected to the ground, which closes the loop. As there is one loop, it is possible to write only one independent loop closure equations. It is possible to write the loop closure equation in different ways, but all of them are equivalent. As the vector position of the slider should have the same direction as the translation motion. We need here to introduce a point D, that is a fixed or static point, on the translation direction. A possible loop closure equation is obtained by writing the position of C relatively to A, using either B or D, as intermediate points. Thus, the loop closure equation writes AB plus BC, the yellow path, is equal to AD plus DC, the orange path. In the inverted slider crank mechanism, there is one loop. The whole mechanism draws one loop. It then is possible to write only one independent loop closure equations. A possible loop closure equation is obtained by writing the position of B relatively to A. Thus, the loop closure equation writes the vector AB is equal to AC plus CB. In a six-bar mechanism, there is three loops. The first is built using links 1, 2, 3, and 4. The second is built using links 1, 4, 5, and 6. And the third is built using links 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6. Though, there is three loops, it is possible to write only two independent loop closure equations. The loop closure equation due to the third loop is not independent of the two loop closure equations, due to the first and second loop. The loop closure equation due to the third loop can be obtained by a linear combination of the two loop closure equations, due to the first and second loop. However, the two independent loop closure equations are sufficient to solve the position problem. Each loop closure equation gives two scalar algebraic equations. In all for the six-bar mechanism, it is possible to write four independent scalar algebraic equations. This is the same number of unknowns, which equal to six, the number of links, minus one, the ground, minus 1, the mobility.
it is possible to obtain the two loop closure equations by considering the position of C relatively to A, and the position of E relatively to D. This gives AB plus BC is equal to AD plus DC. And DC plus CE is equal to DF plus FE. By this fourth example, we come to the end of this video dealing with the position analysis of mechanisms using loop closure equations. Thanks for watching.